another feature that is slept on and will save you a lot of time is favoriting attachments. If you favorite like the Cronin Groove Shot Underbarrel, for example, every time you open the Underbarrel category for any gun, the Cronin Groove Shot will have a star next to it and it gets moved to the front of the list. For Tax Dance, that's helpful. So I set up my SVA and I favorited all the good Tax Dance attachments. So then when I was setting up the other guns, it was super quick. And yeah, you don't have to sort through 5,000 attachments. Gen devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't we <laughs> kick it off, Tanner? We've got to... This is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. Uh, I need to write one more thing down. Um, okay, we are live, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot. Call of Duty Podcast, actual episode number 378. Uh, we were saying... We were saying this last episode... But we got a little mixed up because we did a Patreon gone public on Saturday. So this is really for real, this is for realsies this time. Episode number three hundred and seventy-eight. Yeah. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I am joined by Tanner, and we are doing our highly anticipated. Camo Grind Tips and Also Tricks episode that we were originally going to put behind a paywall. But Tanner, man of the people, said, let's do it publicly, man. And I said, you know what? Okay, we'll do that. So now we're doing it here. And we have a lot of tips and also tricks for you. And I'm excited yeah. about it. Is our was our, uh, was our chat box ever working in the pre-show? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I literally never looked. Empty right now. Yeah, I never I looked we'll once. Out. I don't know. Did so. anyone notice? I would imagine no. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. I, it just. I don't understand random. it. It was working it on. It worked last. It worked on three Wednesday, days right? ago. Yes. Yeah. Works three days ago. I haven't opened OBS since then, and it just okay. Very cool. I wonder if you can like right click refresh browser source or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, with all that said, welcome to the program. So, yeah, we have a lot of tips for you guys to get into here, and I'm very excited to do that. And this is going to be like part one of two. Well, we'll get into that in a second. First, a couple of quick announcements before we get into it. Uh, yesterday, we had our Patreon Damascus hangout, and it was fun. Thanks every Damascus patron who was there. We did some MW3 customs, and they worked perfectly, by the way. Custom games just work well in this game. Um, we formed a lobby. We only had to do that twice in like two hours, which is pretty good. Uh, historically, it's fantastic, in fact. Um, and you know, you press start game and the game like starts instantly. It was really cool. It was really fun and exciting. There was, <laughs> there were still some issues. It is still the case that private matches, by the way, are on like a different build of the video game than public matches. And I don't know why this has ever been the case, but some of you may remember this was a bigger deal a couple years ago when the Warzone tournaments were happening in like 2020 because they would do them in private matches and it took 20 minutes to res someone in a private match in Warzone, but it took one second to do it in public matches yeah. because the game was on a different build for each of them. That I don't know why that's... That's still the case, though, is the point because uh, we were playing... Quarry, Tanner put us into Quarry. I don't know why. I literally it's was very map. close to backing out, but I decided not to. Um, <laughs> but randomly, uh, we like killed the enemy team 
and they just all spawned in the exact same spot. And then we would kill them again, and then they would spawn in the exact same spot again. And this went on for like two minutes. So we all just congregated in the same spot, just farming yeah. Jaken and Neb and Bjorn. I uh, was Because they're not as good as we are. Yeah. And, um, and it was really funny and fantastic. And that definitely has not happened in a public lobby in a while. No. Yeah, that was fixed. The Corey like, spawn incident. Launch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty funny. So that was a good time. But anyway, yeah. Uh, and then we hung out for a little while after. So thank you to all of our patrons, our Damascus patrons who showed up last night. It was a good time. And if you want to come to our monthly hangouts where we do customs or drink or play Scriblio or whatever, patreon.com slash the drop shot. Become a Damascus patron. Link those accounts. And then come to the next one. We normally do it like the last Friday of the month, but not always. You guys want to watch a Christmas movie next month? Ooh, we certainly could. Looks like Christmas here. Does it? In the Damascus Lounge, by the way. I posted some pics and vids of my backyard, which looks like an actual snow globe. It's interesting because I was like, oh, am I doing DMT? Because I feel like I'm in a snow globe when I walked out back today. And then I realized, oh, no. It's just it's picturesque and beautiful and snowing. Fresh powder. In real life, in front of my eyes here, actually. So that was very interesting and cool. It's cool, man. Congratulations on that snow. Got more in the forecast? Uh, Oh, yeah. We got some more snow on the horizon for sure. Yeah, it's fantastic. (sighs) Shout out to snow. Anyway, yeah. uh, So thanks for you guys for coming out. And then speaking of the Patreon... We did do a a gold episode very recently that we did not talk about yet, or did we actually? Uh, we oh, did. There's my did shit we? dog. Um, I, maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But if you're a patron of any tier, no, gold we did or above, because we recorded um, that Thanksgiving morning, unfortunately. Oh yeah, tell us about that episode while my dog barks. Um, yeah, we kind of, we kind of touched on everything, um, camo grind, uh, how that was going, um, kind of, I guess just some observations, how it seems like everyone's doing the camo grind this year. I think every single person in our discord will have the mastery camo by January 1st or something. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we talk about that, how we're feeling about the maps, just like general stuff, like, you know, mini map time to kill. Things we hadn't maybe really talked about since like the beta, more about the armory system, uh, movement, what perks we've been running, all of it. So, yeah, I think a lot of things changed since our first impressions, mostly with the maps, probably. Our, our map list has changed and it's continuing to change. Yeah. Yeah, it's still evolving for sure. But yeah, our last uh, Patreon episode, yeah, is basically second impressions. Um, and we talked about a lot just with respect to the game. And you know, how things have, how our views have changed since our first impressions episode. Uh, and then also there's like some little tips and tricks sprinkled in there. Um, that was a good episode. I really enjoyed recording it. And uh, that is live for all of our patrons. So if you want to check that out, patreon.com slash drop shot. All right, without further ado, I think we should get into this sucker. What do you say? Uh, yeah, we could. You want, should, we, should we jingle it? Are we jingling it or no? We could. And I'll leave that up to you, man. All right. That's yeah, we you. probably should. People may look for the jingle in this one. If you were go. listening for the jingle, in fact, here it is. Yeah. I think that's the jingle plan. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. What it would appear to be. I love that little... Oh, that intro seemed like I mean I snapped my fingers and it was over and I was still eight and a half minutes I'm used to you talking for 25 minutes in the intro that felt like I'm not kidding like three minutes it's what the people love man don't yeah we should just do a whole uh, intro podcast we should do one podcast where it's half intro the other half just food questions that's my ideal pod right there actually that's that's the damascus don't even premium think about call of episode. Duty. Don't mention yeah. it. yeah that'd be great all of our damascus patrons would love that so anyway uh all right welcome to the show today 
Camo grind tips. So, Tanner and I have done a lot of the camos. And... So. And, uh, I would say a lot. And uh, today we're going to talk about it. So basically the structure for this episode is going to be we're going to start as broadly as possible with respect to camo tips. And then as the episode goes on, we're going to get more and more narrow. So that's that'll make sense once we start kind of getting into everything. But all start of this wide, is going to huh? be relevant Yes, to um, to your camo grind experience. And the goal for this episode is to equip those of you listening who are doing the camo grind, the multiplayer camo grind, by the way, um, with information on how to do camos quickly and efficiently and some things we've learned either through Discord or through other, you know, content creators doing camo tips videos or doing it ourselves mainly um, and share it with you. So we'll start here by saying the scope of this episode. We're not done with the camo. We don't have Interstellar yet. So we're going to break the camo tips episodes into two. And today we are going to cover all the base camos for all the guns and all the gold camo challenges for all the guns. And the reason for that is because we've, between Tanner and I, we've done all of them pretty much. Um, and because these are all the same within a category. So like all the gold challenges for the ARs are all the same. And for SMGs, they're all the same. And all the base camos for all the pistols are all the same, etc. So this is going to have the most commonality. And this is what we've done. So that's going to be the focus of today's episode. We're going to talk about every camo yeah. that is either base or gold for every category. When we do part two of this episode of Camo Grind Tips, we will talk about all the forged and priceless camo challenges. Because unlike gold, um, you know, all the gold AR challenges are the same. But all the forged AR challenges, all six of them are different. So we're going to do those camos in a separate episode once we've gotten the camo. So that yeah. is kind of the scope of the episode. And then also, the ones that take, I guess, I mean, none of them are really hard. Uh, some of these, you know, are, could be difficult for um, some people, may take a little time. But what takes the most amount of time and what is the hardest is pretty much up to the gold challenge. After that, for the most part... They're pretty straightforward and simple, too. So I think most of the things people are having trouble with, um, a lot of people ask about tax stance kills still. A lot of people ask about pen kills. So we'll talk about like those things. Because, yeah, once once you get gold, to do forged and priceless, it's pretty damn quick. There's not a whole lot left there. Other Outside of a few guns, there are some that could take a while or more difficult, of course. But Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So... So yeah, just keep in mind that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then also keep in mind some of the forged and or priceless camo challenges are will be a camo we cover today. Like some of those challenges they borrow from like base camo 3 for LMGs or whatever. So some of those we will incidentally talk about, but that, that's not the, the topic today. And also a lot of them are very easy. But again, we'll cover that next time. So, uh, okay. So now we're going to talk about macro level camo tips. So big picture stuff. First of all, I'll start with this. If you're going to do only the multiplayer mastery camo, which is what we're talking about today. If you only want interstellar and you do not plan on getting the zombies mastery camo, I would strongly encourage you to... Level your guns in multiplayer and do the base camos while you level them in multiplayer rather than going to zombies, power leveling, and then coming to multiplayer once the gun is max level to do all the camos. I think uh, strategy number one is going to be faster for you because, 
you know, for me, that's been my strategy. I don't plan on doing the zombies camo. That might change if zombies is really fun, but we'll see. Um, but since I'm not planning on doing that, I've known that I could have leveled all my guns faster in zombies, but also my strategy has been play with a gun, get it max level, do every camo challenge I can while I'm leveling it. And through doing that, for 95% of the guns, as soon as it was max level, I had already done the three out of four base camos that are available to me by the time it's max level. The only base camo, therefore, I hadn't done was the fourth one because that doesn't unlock until max level. So I was using double XP tokens. I've been using the double XP weekend. My guns are all max level now, but when this weekend event, whatever, the double XP came out, I was just, again, getting max level as soon as I was there, move on to the next thing and um, do camos while I do that. I would strongly encourage you guys, by the way, to join our Discord and get yourself a camo spreadsheet. Join our Discord, go to the announcements channel. I uh, And in that channel, the latest message is a link to a Google spreadsheet. It's interactive. It's very easy to use. And it details all the camos so that you don't have to remember what they are. So like, okay, my SVA is level 13. Now I know I have to get 50 ADS kills. So you can instantly start working on that mid-match as soon as you get level 13. Have that open in a separate on a separate monitor or on your phone or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you can track those camos and start doing them uh, mid-match while you level them. That makes it way easier to do that. And if you do do that, which I've done, again, you will have three out of four base camos for pretty much every gun as soon as they're max level. And that makes the grind obviously way faster because then you just backtrack, get the last base camo, boom, right away you can do gold, platinum, etc. Yeah. And I'm like flying through camos now that I've gotten them all max level for this reason. The longest part of this camo grind, no question about it, is simply getting guns max level. Yes. Yeah. Which is maybe unlike past COD games, honestly. That's how easy the camos are now. And that's how few there are. So Yeah, you should yeah. for for almost every category, by the time it's max level, you should have all three of the other base challenges done. And the last one, yeah. I think last challenge for some guns unlocks like one level before max on a couple of them, maybe not, but basically you're never going to have the last base challenge done by the time the gun is maxed for sure. Um but your other three ones should almost always be done. There are a few uh, instances where that's probably not the case, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Right. But that's that's exactly. the worst part of it. So if you feel like if you like you're not very far in your grind, but you have like all of the guns leveled up, but you like really don't have any gold or anything yet, you've done a lot. You've done the vast majority of every of the um of the hard part. Yeah. I would say if you've gotten every gun max level and you've gotten the three base camos using this strategy, which is easy to do, you're more than halfway done for sure. Mm -hmm. Like time wise, uh, not like camo wise, but time wise, you're more than halfway done. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, next little big picture tip here is use that duplicate class feature. So I'll, I'm going to use keyboard and mouse terms. You can do it on controller also, obviously. But uh, you make a class, like let's say you're working on, you know, ARs and you're doing the fourth camo, which is get 25 kills in tax stance with each AR. What I did and what I recommend you guys do is uh, cl custom class one, make the your ideal class, including perks, tacticals, lethals, field upgrades, everything, and secondary. Make your ideal class. And then build the gun and then just duplicate that class six times and then go to class custom class two, change the gun, change the attachments, etc. So then as soon as you are done with that, you get in game, you get 25 kills and then you're like, okay, bet mid match. You just quickly switch to custom class two, 
don't have to think about it. Keep going. Uh, it's the duplicate class feature is slept on. Uh, and another feature that is slept on and will save you a lot of time is favoriting attachments. Don't forget you can favorite attachments. So if you favorite like the Cronin Groove Shot Underbarrel, for example, every time you open the Underbarrel category for any gun, the Cronin Groove Shot will have a star next to it and it gets moved to the front of the list. So for Tax Dance, that's helpful. So I set up my SVA and I favorited all the good Tax Dance attachments. There's the Cronin Groove Shot, there's like a Breacher device, there's the laser. So then when I was setting up the other guns, it was super quick because I just go to those three categories, boom, they're at the front of the list. And yeah, you don't have to sort through 5,000 attachments. Um, so that's really, really helpful. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. Um, but yeah, just... Also, again, to point this out specifically, there is a muzzle device. It's called like something breacher device, I think. It's the only muzzle I've seen in this game that increases your tax stance spread, but also it increases your tax sprint stance spread by like 160%. I'm, I'm almost not exaggerating. It's ridiculous how good it is. Decreases it. So it's it's making it, it better. It makes it better. Okay. Yes, it makes it better. Yeah, yeah. Um, way better. And it's there's only one muzzle device that does it, and you wouldn't think to look at muzzle devices to make your tax stance spread better. So that's why I'm pointing it out to you. There is one. So go to your attachments, show detailed stats always, mm -hmm. and then just put your eyes right on tax stance spread. Keep scrolling until you see the first and only one that gives you tax stance uh, spread and it's and it'll be green and then favorite that because you're, you're going to have to do a lot of tax stance skill uh, kills. Yeah. And that's a good muzzle device to to know about. Yeah. Yeah. Always use the detailed stats, especially when doing tax stance. Always True. use them. You just Always. I don't know what attachments I even ran because all you do is you open the detailed stats page. So you press for me. It's one when I get to like the muzzle devices or something you press one it brings up the detailed stats for that specific one and then you just start scrolling through them all like you're just looking at attachments normally but it's showing detailed stats so you just you just look at tax stance or whatever you're going for horizontal recoil control you just start looking for that and you find one that seems to be the best and then you equip it it's that easy and don't forget also um you can use detailed stats in game so if you don't set up like another class, like you were just saying, that's what I usually end up doing. You just can still look at detailed stats when you're in the middle of a match. You can still quickly just put on new tax stance attachments or whatever you're going for because um, yes. you can view all that in game, which is great. I, I honestly did not expect to see detailed stats in a match in this game. So I'm really glad it's there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, according to chat, it looks like a lot of you guys didn't know this. Yeah, you can favorite attachments. And there are a couple things I encourage you to favorite. Cronin Groove Shot is the best under barrel for tax stance and hip fire. Favorite that. Uh, that breacher device I was talking about. There's a silencer that where it makes you undetectable by radar and it has no cons. No pros or cons other than it keeps you off minimap. I like that a lot. Favorite that. Uh, the Mark III Reflector is the best optic in the game. Favorite that. Um... And yeah, and then when you're setting up new guns, it's a lot faster because they're just right at the front of the line uh, and they're very obviously favorited. There's like a big star next to them. So yeah, use that feature. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Yeah. Um, and I would say also don't you probably don't bother favoriting stocks because stocks are all yeah. gun dependent. They're not common, but like under barrels are common. Muzzles are common. Lasers are common. Optics. Barrels are not. Stocks are not. Optics are common. Mags are not. Uh, rear grips are also not. So yeah, it's going to mainly be under barrels, muzzles, lasers, and optics. Yeah, it's only going to be those actually. Yeah, but yeah, use that feature. Uh, let's see. Yeah. you can favorite other things, but I just don't see the reason to. Yeah. Um, next one here. Uh, hardcore. Hardcore. I think. 
is going to be the move to do many of these a lot faster for you guys. I started playing hardcore two days ago, I guess. Um, hardcore Rust, specifically, because that's 24-7 playlist for the next few days. You absolutely fly through things when it takes one or two bullets to kill everybody. And it's Rust, so it's already a bad map, right? Uh, you're already getting spawn trapped, or you're spawn trapping them. So way, all it is is hardcore, I just yeah. start shooting in a corner where they're spawning, and boom, all of a sudden you have five kills. If that's core, there's enough health where they're going to be able to spawn in and then get out of the way quickly or something. So uh, it is insane how fast a lot of these go in hardcore. I guess Raz was saying Symphony did like almost the whole camo grind in, in hardcore. And honestly, I'm thinking I may do that. Like I, cause yeah. I'm on marksman rifles right now. I'm absolutely not using marksman rifles in core. Uh, it's, I mean, it one shots to like the toe in hardcore. Um, so that and like sniper rifles I can just do in hardcore maybe some of them um, I'll, I'll see about that but it just it's so fast and it's easy kills in the maps like rust is already a horrible map so hardcore doesn't even make it that much worse because it already just sucks right so um, I think when we get to certain categories and certain challenges I'll point out for sure when things are definitely going to be much easier uh, in hardcore like I'll tell you one right now attack stance kills you can get 10 attack stance kills across the map in rust and Two minutes. That yeah, could take you would be a, a good whole one. match or two in core uh, at times. So there'd be a mm -hmm. lot of things that hardcore is just easier for. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, because, uh, yeah, every time... I don't know. I didn't watch Symphony do his entire grind, but every single time I tuned into his broadcast when he was doing the camo grind, which was pretty often. I probably tuned in like 10 times, random times. He was playing hardcore. Uh, so I suspect he did it for literally the entire thing. I also suspect that would in fact be faster yeah. than playing core. Chris just um, said Huskers did it all in hardcore too. Yeah. Okay. So I believe that for sure. Now, ha knowing that you can take with that, you could do with that information what you will. I'm not going to be playing hardcore for most of the camo grind, but things that are like Tanner pointed out, just so much easier and hardcore that it like there's a famas uh platinum camo we'll talk about next time get 21 burst kills obviously i'm going to yeah hardcore it's just 20 that. kills and hardcore it's too easy to like not play hardcore even though i hate hardcore yeah. but like most of them i'm doing them in core anyway but i'm doing that knowing it would be faster to do it in core and as long as you know that that's our job you can take with this do with this information what you will uh, next big picture thing, if you're still leveling guns and you have a bunch of guns you still need to level up, or if you have all your guns max level and now you're doing camos, but you still have a bunch of camos to do, I would encourage you to wait until, what is it, Tuesday? Until um, Rustment 24-7 yeah. drops. Tuesday or Wednesday. There's yeah, so Shipment is going to release next week, um, and you'll see a countdown in-game if you go in-game. It's called Rustment. Change it. It's going to be a 24-7 Rust and Shipment only playlist. If you haven't worked on leveling and or doing camos for shotguns and SMGs and pistols, maybe, honestly, uh, save those for last so that you can level them or do the camos in rustment once yeah. that comes out like my next category to do some camos in is smgs and then shotguns but i have all my guns max level so i'm not wasting double xp time for the event so now i'm just going to skip those and start doing the camos for lmgs and stuff too um instead rather and then once that playlist comes out i will backtrack and do the camos in that playlist because obviously it's a lot better to use a shotgun on shipment to do camos or level than on terminal. Duh. So yeah, just keep in mind that playlist is coming out and um, yeah. Uh, and then uh, next thing here, if you are not going to be close to complete with the camos before December 6th, which is when season one drops, and we get new guns. Or you will be done, but you hate leveling or doing the launcher or melee weapons. Skip it. 
So that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing the launcher. Um, even if I get every other camo that I can possibly get without doing the launcher, which is forged for every other category, and then I have to just standing man until December 6th. Stop. Call me the standing man. Stop. Because I'm not, I refuse to do it. Because to unlock Interstellar, all you need to do is get 36 weapons, priceless camo. And since the launcher is the only launcher in the launcher category, you can simply not do it. Wait for season one when a new LMG uh, gets released and then get the LMG priceless instead. And then you can still unlock Interstellar without doing um, the launcher at all. If you hate melee weapons more than launchers, you're kind of sus, you but I, yeah, you which shouldn't. you probably won't. I don't get it, but that's the other two guns, weapons rather, you can skip because there are only two melee weapons in the category. So you can also wait for season one and then just skip two melee weapons and then get the two DLC guns we're getting in season one to priceless instead. And then you can skip the, the knife and the karambit. Uh, you won't be able to skip like a pistol though, because, because of You'd the way. You'd have to do another three or four guns. Yes. Because of the way platinum unlocks work. Yeah. Because if you, do, if you skip a pistol, you're not missing out on one priceless camo or platinum camo. You're missing out on four because you need to get all of them gold before you can get those four platinum. So you can't skip one, just one pistol because there are multiple in the category. It will only work for the launcher or the, the, the knives. But yeah, if you want to do that, you should. Uh, so uh, that's up to you. But especially if you're not going to be done by December 6th, there's actually no reason for you to do the launcher. Yeah, I don't even start leveling it. Don't do even it. passively do it. There's no reason to. Yeah. I will say, since yeah, we're probably not really going to talk about it next time, a lot of people have been asking, like, for that one. Actually, we'll just talk about it when we get down here. Never mind. Keep going. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I put a section in. So, yeah. Um, And then, uh, yeah, last point is... You're, a lot of times you're going to pick your playlist depending on the map, honestly. Um, however, if you are doing like quick play filter or whatever, objective modes are always going to be better because then you know where people congregate and you're not just like running around aimlessly on a map with people in weird camp spots like you will encounter in TDM and, um, and Kill Confirmed. Uh, you do want to play objective modes to uh to do to level the guns and get the camos and then also playing objective modes you get more xp yeah that's a good point so like if you're on a hard point you get a kill you get like double the weapon xp it, compared to if you're playing tdm and you get a kill uh so that's a faster way to to level your um your stuff up yeah yeah and then kill confirmed i guess too because picking up tags, you get weapon XP. So that'll get you a lot. Kill confirmed, I would say, is really good for leveling weapons. Really bad for doing camos, though. But that's up to you. It will be faster, yeah. I think, playing objective modes, though. 100%. Like, um, you know, if you're playing, like, Rust 24-7 or something like that, just stand on one of the DOM flags, if it's DOM, and just start shooting people. Because you get extra XP for all that. Of course, Hardpoint will give you a ton uh, if you play war, the first area, if you're inside of that de defending zone or if you're inside of it when you're attacking, that's going to give you like double the amount of XP because it's attacker defender kills. Even if you're outside of the zone defending it and kill somebody who's capping it, you're going to get more points that way. Exactly. Uh, yeah. When the tank area comes, if you are standing on the tank, escorting it and getting kills, you're getting double XP for every kill you get. If you kill someone when you're defending on that part and they're on the tank you're getting extra xp for that so make sure you're like in and around the objective because you'll level up your guns like actually twice as fast if you get every single kill on an objective you're going to level twice as quickly yeah it's really yeah it's really efficient so yeah um all right so now we're gonna get down to the more micro level so uh that was kind of like broad strategy on how to do this stuff now we're going to get a little more detailed here. 
we're going to talk about some miscellaneous micro level camo tips or some tips for a particular camo that is shared across two different weapon categories. So I put them in here. Um, first of all, as of yesterday, you were able to do the forged camo. And I'm going to say this. We're going to say this now because this might this could get patched at any moment. Uh, you could do the forged camo for some things in a private match. So if you need multi kills for the SVA, the boss B or the riveter shotgun. Create a private match, put 13 recruit difficulty bots on the other team and then just start farming them. And then 30 seconds later, you will have that camo. Uh, I did this for my SVA yesterday to get it platinum and it was working. So uh, this can be patched at any moment, uh, but it's worth a try because it does not take long to test it. So, yeah, uh, I did this for the that'll SVA save you a lot of time. Just create a private match, put in 12 bots on the other team on recruit difficulty, go to rust or some small map, just simply kill them. And in a minute and a half later, you'll have the forge challenge done. Yeah, not that multi kills is difficult, but instead of taking two matches, three matches, one and a half matches, it takes two minutes of in-game play time. So there's no reason not to do it if it's there. Yeah, it'll it, save it so takes longer time. to create and load into the lobby than it does do the challenge. Yeah, yeah, so very easy. Yeah. Um, next, uh, yeah, Hardcore Rust. Really good, especially for double kills and pen kills. I didn't end up doing most of my pen kills in Hardcore. I should have. They would have been done faster than they were. Um, but yeah, like double kills, anything like that. So easy. You just start spawn trapping people. But again, Hardcore Rust 24-7 will be gone in a few days. So it will still be easier in Hardcore in general to get double kills. Um, especially in, I guess, when Rust Miss comes. Because that, that will also be in Hardcore too. Because hard, Hardcore Quick Play, by the way, be in, in case you guys yeah. don't know, <laughs> when you go to the Quick Play filter specific to Hardcore, filter your settings in there and terminal 24 seven and rust 24 seven are both inside of the hardcore quick play filter. You, they, so they don't show up like on the main menu, like it does for core. So especially pen kills through walls, so much easier in hardcore because it takes one I shot instead of maybe, you know, getting six, seven hit markers on a guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, next is, um, headshots. You'll need that for multiple different guns, even up to gold. Uh, for easy headshots, if you do play the war mode, when you're defending for the tank section, you can get a lot of free headshots by just pre-aiming right at the turret. Because uh, if you're attacking and escorting the tank, you can actually enter the tank and it'll put you, it'll just immediately put you in the turret. Uh, but your head is exposed. So the turret is really strong, but also your head is exposed. And if you're playing against me and I'm going for headshots, you're instantly going to get ripped off of it. But this is like the easiest and freest way to get headshots on any gun. Yeah. Um, if you're pre-aiming it, no one has enough time to kill you once they're in the turret. They're already dead. Uh, and for like sometimes I've done this and just like I'll get one kill and then they just don't try it again. But I've been in other games where just people just have to be in the turret and I get like 15 in that section alone. I'm not kidding. Like actually that many. So uh, your your results may vary, but it's a very Especially easy now, way they to get headshots. War in that zone last a exactly. minute and a half instead of yeah. 45 minutes that it used to. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's that did. Yeah, degrade this strap. But still, if you happen to find yourself playing war and defending and you need headshots, pre-aim that turret. It's very free and easy. Um, hip fire kills. Uh, these are also fairly easy. You need them for SMGs and um, uh, shotguns. Uh, SMGs, by default, have way different hip fire spreads between them, just like every other COD game. Some of them are really good. Some of them are not. Uh, the shotgun hip fire all feels pretty similar to me, though. But um, for these kills, again, just like I was talking about with the tax stance stuff earlier, use the favorite attachments feature. 
Cronin Groove Shot is your guy for the under barrel, the laser, whatever. And then when you're looking at barrels and rear grips and stocks, some of these will increase your hip fire, uh, make it better. And these are not common attachments. So what you need to look for is when you're looking at stocks for the rival nine and you're looking for the best hip fire stock show detailed stats. The only thing you should be looking at is hip fire spread maximum. There also is a value called hip fire spread minimum. This doesn't matter at all because when you're moving and shooting, you are at your maximum hip fire spread. So that's all that matters. And that's what you want to make smaller and improve upon for hip fire kills. Hip fire spread minimum doesn't matter at all. Ignore literally ignore that stat. The only thing you should be looking at is hip fire spread max and then picking whichever attachment helps that particular stat the most. Um, ignore all the other stuff. I think yeah. there's hip fire spread minimum also, which doesn't matter. And there's some other thing that also doesn't matter, but hip fire spread maximum is what you want to improve upon the most for your hip fire attachments on shotguns and subs. Yeah. Uh, and then also for hip fire kills, it seems like assault gloves are helpful for getting hip fire kills yeah. because a lot of times you're going to be jumping um, mid gunfight and assault gloves will keep your hip fire spread as if you were just standing, even when you jump, whereas without assault gloves, you'll get some bloom. So yeah. effectively assault gloves increase your hip fire accuracy. If you happen to find yourself jumping, which you will do a lot, so use assault gloves if you're working on hip fire kills as well. Especially SM or shotguns, I mean. SMGs it'll also be very handy for, but if you're using shotguns and especially doing the hip fire kills, uh, you should absolutely be running the assault gloves, in my opinion. Yeah. I will definitely be doing that when I get to those. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not sacrificing much in the glove category anyway. So for sure run assault gloves for hip fires, yeah. Um, another thing that would be much easier in hardcore, I imagine, is kills without enemies damaging you because yep. you'll either die or not die. Yep. So that seems super free and hardcore. I did uh, Renetti that way yesterday. It's 10 kills uh, without enemy damaging you. It's It was 10 bursts. Yeah. So the first Which 10, is 10 kills, kills. Like, are done. Yeah. yeah exactly. we're in, if you're playing core, you know, you're going to have to put two, three bursts into someone at range by the time you're missing shots. If that they're at 15, 20 core. meters, they're going to get at least a bullet in you. It's still not going to be difficult. Like you're still doing that in a match probably of sixes, maybe two matches at the most, but like hardcore, it's literally just your first 10 kills and it's done. It's also good for something really bad, like the when you get to the the tier, the TYR. I don't oh like gosh. the word tier. I think I because you referred to it as the tier the other day. I think I'm just calling it the TYR. I don't like that tier. Just That's sounds. Fine. Yeah, I hate it. I don't like it. I don't know how it's supposed. To I be don't said. know either. It's a great question. Tire? Maybe tire. Tire or tier, right? Yeah. I hate it though. Yeah, I'll tell you that. But much I hate more. it for sure. Yeah. Um, it's a really bad gun. Yeah, we'll get into it. But anyways, uh. Kill three people in one magazine. It or like 10 three kill streaks with one magazine is a challenge for multiple categories that you're gonna have to do, even up to gold. What that really means is kill three people without reloading. So what I mean by that is let's say I kill a guy and then I kill another guy and I haven't reloaded yet, but I only have one bullet left in my magazine. I'm not hopeless. All I need to do is kill myself in game, of course, without reloading, without firing that last bullet. And then when I respawn, I'll have a fresh magazine. So it's actually a different magazine, but the game doesn't think of it that way. You didn't, you didn't reload it, yourself. Yeah. So it's still the correct, same. Magazine. Yeah. So, so then you just go get one more kill and then, oh, but I have, you know, 59 more bullets. What do I do? Just reload anyway now, now that you've gotten three kills without reloading. Shoot at the sky, reload, get three more kills. Doesn't matter how many times you die. Doesn't matter how many magazines it actually is. The challenge should actually read, kill three people without reloading. Now, once you've killed three people without reloading, you have to reload or you won't keep getting progress. 
In other words, if you kill six people without reloading, you don't get two credits. You only still have one credit. So make sure you count out three, then reload, and then do it again. Yeah. Um, also, this challenge is just buggy. Uh, it mostly works the way I just explained, but not reliably or exactly. I had some weird stuff going on this morning, but as long as you try, don't try to not die and try to actually get three kills in one magazine without dying. Yeah. That'll for sure count. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's a little buggy. So, you know, do it the way I explained it, but, uh, don't get too concerned if it doesn't count all the things you think it should because it's, yeah, it's buggy and weird. It's, and then yeah. also you'll like get gold even though you got your first kill of the match because it's a buggy weird challenge. So I, yeah. yeah, that that's basically, I think it though. somehow still tracks between matches maybe too. I don't know. It yeah, is very, maybe that you get it yeah. at very random time. So it's like, it's just, it feels weird because you could get one kill not reload, of course. So you got get one kill and somebody kills you, right? You can die eight more times in a row. That next life, you spawn and get a kill, you die again. You could spawn back in, get one more kill, and that's going to count the three and one mag. Like, you can go three and ten and still get the challenge done, even if you didn't physically reload yourself. So it's very, it's very weird. But like you said, um, this will also probably get patched quickly. I'm surprised it hasn't been. Uh, this will probably be patched by season one, I would imagine. So uh, just try to get them all in one mag, because if you're not done by then, you're probably going to have to at some point anyways. And it's easy to do. It's Yeah, it's pretty easy. And if you're struggling with it, obviously, put on the largest mag you can. And then if you're still struggling with it, go play hardcore. And then it's and then and then the challenge changes to get three kills without dying. So, yeah, it's it's doable. Um, kill enemies affected by tacticals really means kill enemies affected by your stun grenade specifically, and that's all. Um, I don't know if this is intentional or not. I don't know if this has changed or not. But early on in the camo grind in, in our community, we've had people testing decoys and flashes and all kinds of goofy stuff. And it seems like only stun grenades count as a tactical affecting so, um, flash works so like fine. Right now in chat, I, yeah, flash he's supposedly lying. works also. I don't, I don't think believe so. that. I don't, I've Maybe seen no one does, say flash works to be safe. It just didn't work on stuns, knives. I know that. that works when I was using knives that nothing else worked, but the stuns. Cause Jake was also like, uh, Jake had thought something early on, like snapshots or decoys worked. And I tried it for like five matches and none of them worked. So that didn't work either. Yeah. But so. yeah, the only thing I've seen that for sure works is stuns, so I would definitely use stuns. Plus, they're way better than flash grenades anyways. Yeah, it's not like flashes are much better than stuns. The only thing I would be tempted to run besides stun would be decoy grenades, but I'm we've confirmed that does not work. So yeah, just use stuns, unfortunately, Yeah, for that challenge. Um, next is a, um, a little tip while you're leveling guns. This is going to matter a lot less once you have all your guns max level. But while you're leveling, let's say you get your boss B to level four. The only attachment slots you have unlocked are uh, optic and under barrel. And let's say you really want faster aim down sight speed, but you only have your gun level four. And all you can put on is an optic or an under barrel. Well, now, unlike other COD games... Unlike any other modern COD game, because it doesn't make sense, that's why, uh, there is now a, a singular underbarrel attachment that increases your aim down sight speed and your sprint to fire speed. And it's called something like, something like the skeletonized vertical foregrip. It's something like that, but it's an underbarrel attachment that you can use on any gun that you can put an underbarrel on that I've noticed. Um, and it makes your ADS speed faster and your sprint to fire faster. And it's the only under barrel attachment that does this in the entire game that I've seen. Knowing this is very helpful, again, for when you're leveling guns and you want to max your ADS speed, but you don't have all the categories unlocked yet. And even for some guns, 
There just isn't a stock or rear grip that increases your ADS speed or sprint to fire, even when it's max level. So in those cases, it's also good to know that this attachment exists so that you can get eke out a little more aim down sight speed. Uh, this is another attachment I would encourage you to favorite if you normally build for ADS speed and sprint to fire time. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then last little macro level, or, you know, miscellaneous, uh, I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, last tip, don't be afraid to use conversion kits once you get your guns max level. Once you start working on base camo number four and gold and beyond, uh, you, you will now have access to conversion kits for the guns. Uh, you have to get the gun max level to unlock this attachment. But some guns have these aftermarket parts, conversion kits, things. It's in like the bottom right when you're looking at the attachments. So it, you can miss it, but if you're if you're paying attention, you won't. Um, but some of the conversion kits are quite good uh, and will make doing the rest of the camos easier. So one example is the Palem Yacht 762 belt-fed light machine gun. There is a conversion kit, once you get it max level, that converts it into a bullpup LMG, which gives you... Way more aim down sight speed, sprint to fire speed, um, movement speed, etc. Just makes it a lot faster. Uh, and this is a really good conversion kit. So you won't be able to utilize it while you're leveling it. But once it's max level, you still have more camos to do. Consider using that conversion kit because it's quite good. Uh, and it's then there really are probably good, some yeah. other conversion kits that are going to be worthwhile as well. There's a Renetti conversion kit that makes it like an S a full auto SMG. I'll probably be using that for those camos. There's a core 45 pistol conversion kit that gives it a weird, really cool and fun, but weird thing where when you press down on the fire button, you fire a bullet. And then when you lift up on the fire button, another bullet also comes out. So it's kind of semi-auto, but every trigger pull and release is actually two shots. So if you click as fast as you can, it will look full auto, but you still have to like manually click. It's very weird, but that's another conversion kit that's probably worth using and good. So um, just don't forget those exist once you get your guns max level and you're doing those camos. Yeah, um, the pule, the pulley boy was for sure uh, my favorite of the ones I've used. Yeah, I finished um, the Renetti up to uh, well gold, but um, that I didn't even look at a conversion kit, and I felt like I never needed that gun. Is so good. That gun's really good in core, and of course also hardcore. So yeah, it's know. really good without the. I kit, just put, I sure. I think I literally put a trigger on it and a mag and nothing else because it doesn't matter and it's really good. Yeah, one thing unfortunate maybe i would say unfortunately one thing to keep in mind is that a conversion kit does cost an attachment slot also i would argue it shouldn't but that's a topic for another podcast episode um so something to keep in mind but like for the pulley boy it's probably worth the attachment slot to make it handle like almost an AR. it makes it so. a such a better gun yeah 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 Faster like in that rate, case it's probably mobility. It. it's so good very fun yeah yeah. Pairs well with a 200 round mag. And then also, this should go without saying, but some of the conversion kits are not <laughs> worth using and don't use them. Uh, there's one for uh, one of the SMGs. It converts it to like a 45 caliber gun, but it, it slows the fire rate to like, I'm not kidding, like Sidewinder levels. And it also has a max magazine of 22 that you can't change. It's really bad. Don't use that one, for example. So some of them are not good, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right, so now we're going to get into specific weapon categories. So we're going to go through every category and give you guys some camo tips we found. And again, we're only going up to the gold camo because that's where they're all common. Um, and then also, I'll point out, a lot of the camos I'm not talking about because there's nothing to say. For example, camo two for assault rifles. Get 50 kills while aimed down sight. I have no tips for you on that topic. Play the game. Congrats. You did the camo. There's Come nothing on, to man. Say. Give him a tip. There's, there's, what the okay, heck, man? 
Here's my tip. Aim down sight once you get it to okay. that level for your bind, full yeah, rifle. Bind yeah. an ADS uh, button, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So anyway. Um, so yeah, a lot of the camos we're actually not going to talk about at all. But um, we have tips on the more involved ones or things that we can, you know, make better. So yeah. Starting with assault rifles. Uh, these are super easy. Tax stance kills are also way easier than you would think if you build your gun with all five tax stance attachments, like I was talking about. And you can do that for every AR, by the way. Uh, there's the three common attachments I talked about, which is the laser, under barrel, and muzzle, that already help it tremendously. And then for every AR, you will find a barrel, slash stock, slash rear grip, that also helps your tax stance spread. So you'll have five attachments that increase tax stance accuracy for every single gun. And it's when you build them that way, even in core, you can cross map people reliably as quickly as if you were ADSing. Like actually, it's really, really good and fun yeah. and gross. The only reason I wouldn't do that for general play is because you uh you can't yeah it's it's not worth doing because you're ruining like your bullet velocity your damage range you're not taking a silencer you're not taking extended mags so unfortunately for general purpose play it's not worth doing that but yeah, no it's surprisingly easy to do so uh yeah just make sure you build it for that and use that detailed stats view for tax stance accuracy or spread or whatever it says yeah and then another thing with that um a lot of people i think still don't know this we mentioned a couple times we mentioned in discord people early on thought tax stance kills meant they had to be sliding when you're in that tax stance view for a short period of time like if you're not using tack pads that's not the case you toggle it so you ads you press a button on kbam my button is v i don't know if that's default i think it's tied to your melee button so you ads Press V, that toggles tax stance. It will stay in tax stance for that gun until you turn it off. So it's not like you have to be sliding. It's not like you have to hold down a button to go into tax stance every single time. You toggle it, and then oh, it's always set to that. people were doing that? Yes. I could see that happening. Like, yeah, like, make uh, sure you toggle it on. Yeah, yeah, I think somebody asked that in Discord yesterday, like, any tips for tax stance skills? And I was like, well, first of all, make sure you have it toggled. And they're like, yeah, I literally just found out you could toggle it yesterday. So uh, definitely a lot of people don't know that so make mm -hmm. sure you toggle it of course and then um i mean hardcore is you cross map them in one bullet. hardcore would be absurdly easy to hardcore yeah, rust sure. i did a bunch of these yesterday um yeah very very simple so yeah so um and that's it all the other ar challenges are easy yeah it's all kills, three streaks ADS in one mag. kills headshots and then three streaks with one mag and again just make sure that really means three streaks without reloading or three kills without reloading uh next battle rifles again not much to say here all the challenges are very straightforward kills kills while full auto uh headshots and then three kills with one mag uh the only one that might need a little clarification is camo three get 10 kills with a magnific magnification scope um, I think that literally means any optic. It doesn't have to be a zoom optic. So, um, yeah, I, I, I fell for this with the boss B. I switched to like a 2.5 X and I didn't want to, but you can just use like the Mark three reflector. We confirmed works as a magnification scope. Correct. So yeah. I think I suspect literally any optic would work for these kills. I think so too. But also when I did these, uh, I just used the reflector too the whole time and they worked. So I, yeah, the I would imagine like the, the slate reflector works. I think it just, I think what it's saying is put a scope on your gun. Just don't use iron sights and you'll get those done. And of course it's only 10 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello there and happy Thanksgiving. This ad read today is brought to you by us, another drop shot ad. Again, guys, we keep saying this. If you're thinking about joining the Patreon, it's such a good time. Banger episodes, they're coming out all the time. Early access, so important right now. Here's what you do. Join at the gold tier for $5 a month. You get early access, 
ad-free public episodes, three COD-related bonus episodes every month, as well as every bonus ep we've ever recorded. There's like 150 plus in there, a back catalog of episodes. And of course, you get access to the patron-only Discord channel. Our first bonus episode this month was a multiplayer deep dive. It was very productive, gave us lots of ideas for new perk setups to try. And on Thanksgiving Day, yeah, we're working overtime, it's cringe. We'll be recording another Modern Warfare 3 Impressions episode. We'll dive deeper into the maps, the weapons, game updates, the new modes, and much, much more. It'll be an absolute banger. For $10 a month, guys, gets you the platinum tier. Everything from the gold tier alongside one Q&A episode every month where you guys can ask the questions or hear the answers. Damascus, the Chad tier, $20 a month, gets all of that plus behind the scenes episode, a monthly Damascus only patron hangout, which we're doing this week, by the way, Modern Warfare 3 Customs, and you get access to the Discord Damascus Lounge, the best channel in the Discord. So listen, if you hate hearing this ad, just sign up for the Patreon, it's that simple. Now back to the show. Next is SMGs. These are, again, very straightforward. Um, you will need a lot of kills on people affected by your tactical, but again, just use stuns and, um, ooh, ooh. Tens would probably be better for that. I haven't actually done that one That's yet. That's true. Tens would probably be good. This, I think, for the base challenges, doing all the SMGs, so it's 15 kills each with an enemy affected by tactical. That, I think, will take longer than any other base challenge, almost. I agree. Maybe... Like, well, just because the amount of guns, though, too, and then you have to stun them, and then they can't be stunned for very long. Like it, it's it seems like it goes away very quickly. At least that's how that it was has when to be I did the slowest um, category. Yeah, uh, yeah. marksman rifle headshots, fifty headshots is also a lot, but doing all of those in a row because it's all the last camo challenge, so it's the only one you're gonna have left to do. So then you're gonna Which have to do annoying. what six of them in a row. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, but still, kills. overall, this camo grind is so quick and easy that uh, it's doable. But yeah, I'd run yeah. the um, engineer vest, engineer vest, double stuns. Yep. And then field upgrade, run munitions box so you can get more stuns. And incidentally, engineer vest recharges your field upgrade more quickly. So you'll have that extra stun from your muni very often when you're doing this. So make sure you're running engineer vest, double stuns and munitions box field upgrade when you're doing this SMG challenge. Uh, war mode would be good because yes, in a lot of those really sections, good. you know where people are coming from, um, and they're coming in groups often, so it's very easy to get a stun and then a kill. Um, and then also um, tens, because there are just like more people that could be good as well. Yeah. This is one where I would say, like, super don't play TDM or Kill Confirmed. Because then you're going to be, like, randomly looking for, like, one guy at a time. I, I don't... I think it would be way slower. Honestly, I think I'll go to War Mode for this. War Mode. Yeah, like, War Mode or Rustmas. Comes, yeah, or, or that. Or, yeah, that. Yeah. Which is what I actually will be doing. No, what yeah, is it? Right. Rustmas. That's not right, is Rust it? Rustmint. Rustmint, yeah. Rustmint. I was thinking DOS House. Yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, for sure shipment that'll end up be being quick on. Um I had another thought. Dang, what was it? Uh shoot, I don't remember. But yeah, just throw all the stuns, you'll you'll eventually get it. That one's gonna be a little annoying though, for sure. That one's just gonna take some time no matter what. Oh, That's I remember what it was. I feel like tens covert sneakers could go crazy because this is happening to me a lot. I wouldn't hear anything. I'd get stunned. Some guy was right behind me. He'd see me throw a stun back up around the corner so it wouldn't stun him. He'd shoot me in the back. He'd get his easy kill. So a combination of that too. They don't hear you coming with the covert sneakers. Uh, stun them and then just shoot them. Good point. Also, probably use TAC mask so that if you accidentally stun yourself, hopefully they don't have TAC mask. And you can kill them before they're out of their non-tac mask stun. Try not to stun yourself would be tip number one. But with the engineer vest, you have two gear slots. You can afford to run tac mask there. And then, yeah, maybe run ghost with covert sneakers as well. So you can get really close behind people. And then you can just at your leisure stun and kill them. That's a good tip there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think ultimately this is going to be fastest on shipment 24-7. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and the same thing, gold for that. 10 kills without an enemy damaging you. Probably, again, even easier in hardcore, but that one's not going to be difficult either way. Yeah, correct. Um, and then there's another uh, challenge for SMGs. Get 10 kills while crouching or sliding. Uh, for me, this just meant get kills while crouched, which is pretty straightforward. Um, however, if you are a sliding character, you know, run tactical pads so that you can stay ADS while you slide. That could make this a little easier. But you only need 10 with each one. It was no pr trouble for me. I don't remember doing it, and I did them all. So yeah. I just was crouched. I didn't use tactical pads, but if you wanted to get uh, slide kills, throw them on, and then those will count too for that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shotguns is next. Uh, the challenges for shotguns, super straightforward and easy. Um, nothing to it at all. Uh, the gold challenge is get two kills shortly after sprinting in one life. I actually haven't done that yet, but I mean, literally you should be able to do it in one life. So like run around, build for sprint to fire if you're really struggling with it. But I can't imagine this is hard. You just run. I've heard it's very generous. The time people. they give you. Yeah, yeah. So don't dread it, I guess, and the, and then just do it. It's very easy. Um. So yeah, all the challenge. I I really don't have anything to say about the shotgun challenge. Yeah, kills, I will hit say, fire, ADS, double kills. Yeah, it's all yeah, easy. All double kills easy. probably quicker and easier and hardcore as well. Yeah. Um. On the topic of how to build your shotgun, though, there are some new ammo types in this game. There's, like, mono rounds on a lot of the ARs and stuff. There are bolo rounds as well on shotguns. And I've never heard of this before. And I read the description. I thought it was interesting. But anyway, I found bolo rounds in particular because by the description, they sound really good. They're not, though. They're super inconsistent and not at all worth the attachment slot. Uh, I was trying to use them because Bandit told me he liked them. And I just can't believe that he did. I, I don't know. I, I would shoot, like, right at people and get no reg. It, like a slug, basically. Super not worth it, in my opinion, especially sacrificing an attachment slot. I highly encourage you to not run any ammo type, no incendiary, no anything, and instead, just use that attachment slot on max damage range and max hip fire accuracy. I built my shotguns that way. I gave up on the ammo type thing, and then I flew through shotguns, and everything felt as it should. I think the bolo rounds and all the other ammo types are a bait for shotguns. That's my really only tip. Yeah. Oh, and then again, use assault gloves for the hip fire kills. Yes. But since you're always hip firing with a shotgun outside of doing the ADS challenge, which is super fast and easy, um, you'll be hip firing anyway. So probably use assault gloves while you level this as well. So. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah, you should. I think the whole time you're using shotguns, pretty much you should be using the assault gloves because you'll be hip firing a ton. So being able to jump and maintain that perfect accuracy when jumping is yeah. very strong. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, use assault gloves for this as well. Um, and the next category, LMGs. So we do have a couple things to say here, Tanner. Tell us about some of them. Yeah, so one thing I've noticed, um, I was running lightweight boots uh, with LMGs because I was, they're just so slow and they get very annoying after coming from a different weapon category. Don't like moving slow, as I've said a bunch of times. I don't like using LMGs and COD ever. Uh, lightweight boots definitely made them feel a lot better. So consider running those just better movement across the board um, to give you that, you know, three, five percent, whatever it is, movement speed to, for everything. Um, yeah, so th this is like the first category pretty much besides attack stance where it's one that a lot of people ask about. So you got to do kills, 10 kills with full attachments, which of course is just five attachments, 10 double kills, hardcore play hardcore rust, play hardcore shipment when it comes in next week, spawn trap people, hold down the trigger, it takes one bolt to kill everyone, it's real simple. So for the base challenge, the one that a lot of people ask about is the penetration kill. So um, what I ended up doing is I was running the um, 
the stalker boots, I believe. Those are the ones that give you faster ADS mobility, right? Yes, I yeah, faster so. ADS yeah. drive speed. So I also did this. Let's yeah. be super clear. They're not that great. It doesn't buff it that much, but I ran them to help a little bit. So uh, you do that with an LMG, so you can strafe back and forth, basically, and shoot through like a corner of a wall or something more easily. Uh, use armor penetration rounds. Mono rounds, too, I guess, give pen, but... I looked at the blog post and I think armor piercing rounds should do more penetration if their blog post is correct about how what the things in the gunsmith mean because the armor penetration is like the chevron I think it's called right and then the mono rounds are like two just two carrots, arrows yeah. carrots yeah so I think just the That's armor correct, piercing the ones way, do yeah. work a lot better because I saw everyone saying mono because like it gives you some other things too but Let's be clear, neither of them pen that well, which is why this is also a lot easier in hardcore. You'll end up getting a lot of hit markers, or you just won't be able to shoot through a lot of things you figured you would be able to shoot through. Like with an LMG with armor piercing, I'm like, dude, I can't shoot through this little concrete barrier that's like, sure, it's like a few inches thick, but in some CODs in the past, you could shoot through that with, you know... Um, FMJ. Like, like COD 4, if you had deep impact on an AR, you could shoot through any wall in the map pretty much easily and still kill people yeah. like four or five bolts. It's not like that. You still will not be able to shoot through a lot of things. You got to look for stuff that's more thin. In other words, yes, correct, yeah. My experience is the same. In other words, armor pen using armor penetration rounds, the ammo type, is not going to enable you to penetrate something you could not penetrate without it, but... On things you can penetrate, even without armor pen rounds, you will now get more damage through those things you can bang. So it doesn't enable you to wall bang more stuff, but the things you can wall bang, you'll get way less damage loss banging them. So they're still worth using, I would say. Um, but yeah, it's not going to like let you bang things you couldn't bang without them, unfortunately, which it should, but it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say still use them. So yeah. I think one thing people do incorrectly, there are there are a lot of maps. We can kind of get into the specifics here for certain maps that are really good. But um, I think the biggest mistake people make is they try to focus on killing an enemy who is like behind a piece of cover and pinning them through that piece of cover. Where in my opinion, I think the fastest and easiest thing to do is put yourself in some sort of cover and you shoot through that on enemies that Correct. are in the open. So I people agree. are like, I, this guy's behind this barrier. I need to pin this barrier to kill him. I'll still try to do that if I'm working on the pen kills, but that usually isn't going to work as well. You stand like... Pretty much any corner you imagine. If there's a corner and it's concrete, right? You can shoot through the edge of it, basically. So that's why you run um, stalker boots and you ADS. So you get faster mobility. I literally just strafe back and forth on the corner. As you see somebody, you can mark that person too. So you can continue to shoot them for, through a wall. And you just strafe back and forth. So a bullet will go kind of through the wall. Then it won't go through the wall. And one of those... Like, you'll usually end up getting the kill and it will end up uh, being a pen kill just from shooting through like a tiny corner, strafing back and forth. Correct. So that yes. works well. Like, a state, if you're playing hard point, there's like an area where uh, it's like some electrical boxes or something. It's like a chain link fence that you can't see through it. Just start, you see they're capping the objective, just start wall banging it. That counts. Um, Scrapyard, the chain link fences, I think it's at the B flag, like on Dom. Maybe it's. I think it's B. It's um, the B flag. You yes, easily sure. shoot through that yeah. chain link fence. That counts as pen kills. There's a spot bandit originally pointed out in um, in our Discord. If you're playing war mode, the first zone, if you're attacking, there's a truck in the middle of the road. You can crouch in the back of that truck and you can shoot through the glass. They can't see you very clearly through it. You can't see them very clearly, but you'll start shooting. You'll start getting hit markers. Or again, you can mark the person. So they have a little red icon above their head as you're shooting through cover. That's, that counts as pen kills. There are a lot more spots than you would think. Uh, if you're playing Wasteland, you can shoot through a lot of the trees. The um, Yeah. I mean, there there are so many little areas you can pen. It's, you just you have to focus on it and do it. You can't just really play normally. Because if you play like you would usually play, you'll get the gun max level. You'll have maybe a few pen kills if you actually go for it like there was one time i think um you unlock pen kills at like level 12 i had all 10 of them done by the time the gun was like level 14 if you're going for them it's very easy you really knock them out you just have to use armor piercing rounds and you have to 
put yourself behind that piece of cover. Don't try to shoot somebody who's behind a wall capping an objective. You put a piece of cover in front of you. It makes it a lot easier. I agree for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I did uh, Terminal 24-7 because people were saying if you play in the plane, then you can get like a lot of wall bangs that way, which is true. Uh, if your bullet goes through glass and then that bullet kills them, that will count as a wall bang, but glass gets destroyed in one bullet. So it's not super reliable, but like, even if you're looking through the, the plane windows on terminal, um, you basically will like see someone and then get them weak and then strafe, between two windows, so you're shooting through the plane itself for, like, the last bullet, and you get the kill. Yeah. However, if I had to do this again, I wouldn't even bother. I would simply play whatever I want normally, and if you have armor pen, armor penetration rounds on, or even if you haven't unlocked them yet, you'll still be able to bang plenty of stuff. If you're just trying to go for them as soon as you unlock this challenge, you'll have 10 by the time it's max level. Like, there are all these little spots, and you can watch, like, YouTube videos on, like, what the best penetration kill spots are or whatever. You don't need to, though. Like, you can get a bunch of penetration kills on any map. If you're just, like, paying attention and looking to get them and working on it as soon as you unlock the challenge, you'll have all of them done for all the guns before they're max level anyway. It's not really as hard as it, like, might seem no. before you start doing it. Yeah. Just basically just try to do it and you'll do it. Um, and I do want to echo what Tanner said. It is far easier to strafe yourself behind cover and get the penetration kill that way than the opposite. Um, so like just play a lot of windows while you have to get these pen kills and then get someone weak and then use your stalker boots to strafe to the wall next to the window and get the last bullet through the wall and then you get the yeah. pen kill. You can do Pretty this easy. You could do it on every single map. There every single map Actually, has plenty yeah. of various to pen through cuz you always hear like oh what are your tips for getting pen kills and people are like oh scrapyard shoot the chain link fence. Hey, I agree, man, but I haven't played Scrapyard in a week and a half, right? Because you're not yeah. just... You could play yeah, the game for six yeah. hours, even with map voting, and still not actually see Scrapyard. So there are plenty of locations on every single map. Skid Row has a lot of them as well. Um, Rust has a lot of them. Even with like all like the metal pipes and different things on Rust, like the metal structures at the base of them, it'll be thin pieces of metal. Again, strafe back and forth right behind that. One of the bullets will just tap the metal as it's going through. You'll get the kill, and it'll count as a pen kill. Um, there is a, a white truck that's blown out over in the corner where I think it's a tanker truck is like angled that spawn. You can shoot through people when they are at that truck. That is a good location actually to pin somebody when they are behind cover. You can easily pin through that truck. The bullet will like go through the seat or something, hit the guy. That'll be a pen kill. You yourself can sit behind that truck, especially in hardcore uh, and just start shooting people. There's so many locations through that specific truck to wall get wall bang shots. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's definitely easier than it, than it seems. One thing we'll cover in our, in part two is going to be for one of the snipers. You need to get pen kills. That sounds considerably more annoying to do. Um, and I don't have tips for that yet. Yeah, I haven't done that uh, yet either. But we will cover that particular topic in part two of this camo grind up um, yeah. tips. Episode. Luckily, it's just one sniper and it's 15. Yeah, so it's not too bad. People have done it, obviously. But um, but for the LMGs, yeah, I mean, it's it's super easy. As long If you try for it, you'll have it. So. And then there's another, uh, the gold camos is get two kills without releasing your trigger 10 times. So you can go play hardcore and get and finish the entire challenge without um, releasing your trigger. You yeah. can easily get 20 kills with 200 rounds on the Polem Yacht. You, you could, yeah. In hardcore. Like, yeah, you I mean, you'll die, but like, you know, if they weren't shooting you, you easily do that. Uh, but even if you don't want to play hardcore. This would be very easy in core as well with LMGs specifically. Um, 
Especially if you put on a bigger mag. Like, yeah, the Palem Yacht has a 200 round mag and not a fast fire rate. So you can play core. Even in core, you could probably get... I, I mean, 30, 25, 30 kills if you're, like, not missing bullets with 200 rounds. So, like, this isn't going to be that hard. Yeah, this put is... Put on a bigger mag if you need to. Extremely easy in hardcore. I did put on bigger mags for the... I think the Holger and the DG58, because I want to say they both only have like 60 round drum mags by default. Um, yeah, I think those are drum mags. So you can, put, mags, yeah. you can put like a 100 round drum on there, which shouldn't be an issue, but it's like I don't really run attachments on any of the guns when I'm doing these challenges anyway, so I'm like, why not? It hurts my ADS a little bit, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to ADS, shoot someone, and then just stay ADS holding down the trigger, looking around the map for other people. So, you know, the ADS speed doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, and then let's see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So next category is marksman rifles. Uh, so for marksman rifles and sniper rifles, I was using the marksman gloves because they give you reduced sway when you're aiming down sight and uh, reduced bullet flinch when you're aiming down sight. And on snipers and marksman rifles, the snipers especially, like, you're required to use a scope. You can't, like, take it off. Um, and then for some of the marksman rifles, I think that might be the case, too. But, yeah, marksman gloves are helpful, mainly for the reduced sway. But the reduced flinch is pretty helpful as well. And, again, for gloves, you're not really sacrificing anything. So, yeah, use marksman gloves for marksman rifles and sniper rifles when you're leveling them and when you're doing the um, camo challenges for them. And then also stalker boots, I would say as well. Uh, you don't really need covert sneakers when you're sniping or like using a marksman rifle, like shooting people far away. You're not going to be like pushing buildings. So covert sneakers don't really matter that much. Uh, and stalker boots increase your ADS, stra ADS strafe speed and when you have like magnification scopes, you're going to be strafing in and out of cover very often. This is when stalker boots, I think, are best, actually. So I would recommend you run stalker boots for your marksmen and snipers. Um, this category, camo number two, is get 50 headshot kills. This is the only category where I did not have that done for three out of the four guns by the time it was max level. So especially in the case of marksman rifles, as soon as you unlock the camo challenge, reference your spreadsheet, um, to get 50 headshot kills, start going for it right away. Because uh, that will take a while. You need 5-0 for all of them. Um, and that's a lot. Yeah. So start working on that as soon as you unlock it. I have no real tips for getting headshots. I mean, aim at their head, do the war mode strat like I was talking about. My main thing here is like, make sure you start going for it as soon as you hit that level that you unlock that challenge because you probably won't have it done by max level. So you want to start chipping at that, chipping away at that um, right away. Um, yeah, 50 is kind of a lot. <sighs> It, it, too many. it wouldn't it's be if this if this camo grind wasn't as easy as it is. Um, it's like all the other guns. It's like twenty five hip fire kills with every SMG, fifty ADS kills with like all of the other guns. But then for marksman rifles, fifty headshots. I don't know. It's weird. But yeah, I don't think if if it's double XP or you have a double XP token and you're playing and going for headshots, even then. I don't think like almost ever you would max the gun and be done with your headshots. You're like, you're still probably going to need more after like I just started doing my first one last night. Um, so you unlock those at level 13. I want to say I'm like level the guns like level 17 now. And I think I only have like seven or eight headshots so far. Cause you know, if you're playing the objective and stuff, you end up leveling so fast. So definitely try to go for those immediate. Like, like he's saying, yeah. Yeah, because then after the headshot, it's 10 kills with no attachments. I would just... I'm not even sure I would do that. I, I think I would just keep my attachments on and focus on getting the gun maxed out and then do the headshots and then after just take 
the attachments off. Because if you run no attachments and then you're trying to get the headshots as well, I think that's going to be a little bit harder. Because like the 10 kills, no attachments is so simple. I would just focus on getting your headshot kills done and then, uh, you know, start that after basically. Or vice versa. Just don't. You're not going to get very many headshots on a crappy marksman rifle with no attachments probably. I would agree with you, if, but it's only 10. Kills. Yeah, that's true. It is only 10. So I just did it as soon as I got it. Again, I used that duplicate class feature when I started leveling one of these. And for cl custom class 2, I had the uh, same class, except I took all the attachments off the gun. And then custom class 1 is the one I added attachments to as I leveled. And as soon as I hit that uh, uh, weapon level... To do the no kills attachments challenge i changed my class to custom class 2 got 10 then went right back super easy either way works though yeah. but yeah it, it is hard it is it is a lot harder especially with some of these dog poopy marksman rifles to get headshots without attachments yeah it's definitely harder that's true yeah so um but either way i mean it's gonna be pretty fun um and then uh, the last camo challenge for the uh, base level for the marksman rifles is get two kills without dying 15 times. So unlike three kills with one magazine, you don't have to reset this to continue getting progress. Meaning, if you get two kills with your marksman rifle, you don't need to go die to then continue getting progress. You can get four kills in one life. And that will count as two kills without dying twice. So don't feel like you need to go kill yourself in game, of course, um, after every two kills. That is not the case. Um, but it is the case for the reloading thing. You have to make sure you reload after three. But yeah, just a little PSA for you there on that. Yeah. Um, next is snipers. Again, marksman gloves and stalker boots combo. This is even more important, I would say, for snipers than marksman rifles, but... Again, just for all the same reasons I had just said. Um, and then another thing is optics. So on the snipers, two of the three snipers, you can't even use a red dot on. Like it won't let you, it won't let you put the slate reflector mm. or the Mark III reflector. Yeah, on the heavy The boys. lowest you can go is um, 2.5x for optics on the sniper rifle. Or if you don't put an optic on, it gives you the default scope, which is 300x, which is too much. Um, so a great optic for these that has the lowest zoom you can use, which is 2.5, is the Corio Eagle's Eye 2.5x. Once again, use the favorite attachments feature and favorite that sucker, because you're going to want to use it. It's, it's going to be the uh, Warzone really meta too. Make sure you have that unlocked anyways. Correct. It's going to be the Warzone meta attachment. It's very similar to like an axial arms, I would say. Uh, cute, fantastic little optic. And it's the best optic that has the least zoom that you are allowed to equip on a sniper rifle. And you might be thinking, well, I just use normal sniper scopes when I'm sniping. That's cool. But then you're not doing the camo challenges, I guess. Because one of them is... Get 50 kills shortly after ADSing. This is a lot easier to do with a low zoom optic, at least in my opinion. Um, because then you just build it for max ADS and sprint to fire, not like a sniper at all, and then run around with your Corio Eagle's Eye trying to quick scope people, basically. Um, here's the reality this is just a dog poop cancer camo challenge where you're going to die a lot when you otherwise wouldn't and deal with it, I guess. I don't know. Um, luckily, you unlock this as the second base camo. So you still have plenty of weapon levels to go after unlocking this, but um, it is toxic to do for sure. And like, this is not how I want to use a cat AMR. I want to hold a sight line when I know someone's going to be peeking it soon. But instead, I'm going to standing man, just 80, just like looking at it, hip fire, and then do my slow aim down sight speed once the guy jump peeks me with his face skin and just shoots 
completely everything at my head with his rival nine mm, yeah. Orion somehow because he used an unlock tool. Yeah, he did. Uh, and I'm dead before I'm fully uh, ADS. It sucks, but there's nothing. I mean, I don't know. I can't. Yeah. My, again, my tip for this camo challenge is again, as soon as it unlocks, it's camo number two. Start going for it and build your sniper to be max ADS speed. That's going to be a laser. Um, it's going to be that optic and then, you know, short barrel, whatever you can do. Uh, the skeletonized foregrip I was talking about. When you're leveling, that's going to be helpful knowledge to have. Uh, I think I use this while leveling for more ADS on all snipers. Um, so, yeah, uh, make sure you favorited that, like I had said earlier. And by the way, the Choreo Eagle's Eye will say when you try to equip it on your sniper rifle that it lower that it makes your aim down sight time slower but if you look at the detailed stats it actually makes it faster oh because cool. it's replacing the default sniper scope this yeah. is how it worked by the way in like mw19 even um if you put uh you know a vlk on like the zrg it would actually increase your aim down sight speed because that optic is smaller than the default sniper scope. That is the case in this game. Don't be fooled by the simplified stats. So yes, the Choreo Eagle's Eye will increase your aim down sight speed as well. But yeah, it's just cancer and is not good and fun and it sucks doing that particular camo challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything to add on that? I don't know if you've done any of those. No, I haven't touched any of them yet. Only thing I think I would say, uh, which I think I already said it, is longbow for sure gets hit markers. That one would be very easy in hardcore because you're going to one-tap everybody with that thing. Got yeah, a quick the longbow. Speed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would do that one in hardcore. The other two, you will very reliably get one-taps, though. Yeah. In core. But yeah, longbow you might want to do in hardcore um, because I'm it is really weird and inconsistent. I'm thinking about leveling those like halfway in zombies just so I don't have to use like get as many actual kills with them just to kind of get them leveled up a little bit. Because, you know, like the third, if you do that, like the you third and stop fourth challenge, camo two. that's what I'll, that's basically what I'm thinking. Get to camo two, So I'm set up to start doing the ADS kills quickly. Because um, then yeah. the other ones, yeah, three kills in one mag 10 times with a sniper. That's so easy because you like never reload them anyways. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. You get a couple, die, get another one, yeah. And then, of course, one-shot kills will be very simple as well. Yeah, obviously. So I, um, I think I'm going to halfway level those in zombies. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, kill shortly after ADS again. Just build it for max, max, max aim down sight time. And then just I don't, what I ended up doing was, again, just not not using it like a sniper i'd like run around and you know try and find people mid-range to where even the short barrel is going to be a one tap and just like try and quick scope them yeah but yeah. it's just it's it sucks doing it i don't know i hated it but um last one is uh the gold challenge for the snipers is get 10 kills while focused down sights all that means is once you're adsing you get that little prompt that says like hold shift to hold your to focus or hold your breath uh that's what that means so make sure you like are pressing that button to hold your breath or whatever and then those kills will count that's going to be super easy i don't know if this game lets you hold your breath with like the 2.5x optics it, it lets not. you hold it with a slate reflector on a marksman rifle so yes oh okay then yes it does okay then yeah. you don't even have to change that if you don't want to yeah Okay, so yeah, just that's what focused means. It means you're pressing that button to hold your breath once you're ADS. Yeah. Uh, next is pistols. Um, yeah, these are super easy challenges again, and most of the pistols also are completely viable in core. And like with the core 45, I was doing as well using that as I was using like your average SMG. Like it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So don't feel like you need to go to hardcore if you absolutely can't stomach it. Uh, this is not MW19 where you really had to go to hardcore for like most of the pistols. The pistols in this game, for whatever reason, with one exception, 
are quite viable. Um, yeah, the core and, and the, Renetti are both really, really good guns, actually. Yeah, they're really solid. And the WSP Stinger is definitely pretty good, but you really need extended mags because it's like one kill and then you have to reload. But anyway, it's yeah, they're all horrible iron sights. Yeah, really, really. They're bad. not good. Yeah. And a lot of recoil. I mean, yeah, it's. I'm glad though they have to balance it somehow if they're going to put it in the pistol category. Yeah, I don't know why it's in the pistol category, but yeah. As far as the challenges go for pistols, they are all very straightforward, and I have nothing to say about them. Get kills, get ADS kills, get kills while moving. You don't have to try; you'll just have them. I don't know what it means, but it's you'll get it immediately. Get akimbo kills. And then get kills without enemies damaging you. That one's probably hardcore, like yes. we've already said. Yeah, one one shot in hardcore, basically. One or two bullets, easily. Yeah. So, yeah, the challenges are super easy for pistols. What attachments you use is actually up to you. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the one exception is the TYR slash tire slash tier. This is like the Magnum revolver, I guess. I don't know who made it, but that manufacturer shouldn't be allowed to make weapons. I agree. Or anything. Um, this is a miserable dog poop and trash weapon, and I don't know why it's so bad. I do know why it's so bad. I don't know why they designed it this way, though. It has the most trigger delay of any gun I've used in a in a first or third person <laughs> shooter. I'm not joking. Uh, ever and, and i've been playing video games for 30 years almost and there's never been a gun in a game ever that i've used where you press fire and the bullet doesn't come out for like two minutes it's a joke how bad it is so this gun sucks it's gonna suck in hardcore it's gonna suck in core it's gonna suck in ground war it's not good at all ever in, in under any well with one exception um so so sorry and the, you're not going to have fun using it whether you do it in core or hardcore or not i actually don't know what's going to be easier cuz it's really bad that trigger delay is so cancer however fairly early on you unlock a new trigger that increases the fire rate and the trigger response time Meaning when you pull the trigger, instead of waiting two minutes for the bullet to come out, you only have to wait like 30 seconds. Um, it's noticeably better. The fire rate also increases. That doesn't matter. But it, to me, it's way more helpful because it gives you the increased um, response time, which is good. So once you unlock yeah. that, it gets a lot easier. Um, and then once you get at max level... The, it go it becomes the best pistol in the game actually because you will have that trigger you'll also have a kimbo and you'll also have a nice little ammunition type that's both fun and exciting that some of you may remember called snake shot oh so it does have snake shot huh okay it does and then it's the best gun in the game yeah, yeah uh, okay. i've been i've okay. been using a kimbo snake shots on it and it's really good actually yeah um you just build it for hip fire with uh that trigger and then obviously snake shot and akimbo and you're cooking with gasoline yeah it's really good yeah so once you get it max level it's very viable but until then you're not gonna have fun sorry that's just i don't know i have no tips yeah and you're Take probably an thinking Ambien like or a, a zanny rather whatever you're probably thinking like, oh, cool, it's like a bad gun. They only It only has like 15 levels or something. No, and you'd be wrong. It has the most levels of any pistol. Uh, I mean, it has 26. more levels than like... That's 26. It's the same amount of levels. That, it has more levels than most of the ARs, actually. So, yeah, very annoying. So, this is one of those things, again, you want to make sure you have the pistol out to level while you are doing certain actions in the game. Um, war mode. Building sandbags, have the pistol in your hand. Have the pistol in your hand when you hop in the tank on the mountain machine gun. You get three kills, that counts as weapon XP towards your pistol. Stand on objectives and domination and cap them when no one else is. You may get a kill with it, you probably won't, you'll probably lose every gunfight, but if you're on hard point, stay on the hard point with the gun out. Some guy runs up to you and you're lucky enough to get a kill, you get double XP because you want Switch to level to that to pick up tags as quickly as possible. This may be another one too, 
where you want to level it like halfway in zombies or something. Like get it at least till you have the 50 kills with ADS unlocked, which is level 11. Just because as you continue to finish leveling it in multiplayer, the challenges are get 50 kills from the first uh, from the base challenge, then get 50 kills while ADS. So you'll have you'll be finishing that by the time you're maxing out the gun. So I would say and that if you're really struggling. by the time you unlock that challenge, you'll have that trigger unlocked, which helps a lot. So yeah, that's actually a good idea. I should yeah. have done that. That trigger yeah. unlocks, it's like six or seven, I believe. It, it does make it a lot better, but it's still like, the fire delay still makes it a little rough to use. And it's then still, also yeah, like- pretty bad. It zooms in really far when you ADS for some reason. Have you noticed that? It's like it has a built-in 2.5 times scope. It's like you're playing on uh, independent field of view. Or, Interesting. Uh, it's I very, very weird. That's the first thing I noticed. I'm like, dude, why does it zoom in so much? And the iron is like so bulky, the iron sight. So what it's I not did good. Notice, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, what I did notice is it has one of the few unique attachments in the game, which is an optic. I think it's unique anyway, but it has this weird like 3x optic that I've only seen for that particular gun. And it's like, um, it's, uh, it's kind of like the skull splitter optic people would use in BO4. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. It's like a big scope on, it's like a, in Tar what's the Tarkov, the RSH? Yeah. You know how everyone puts like a voodoo on it? Mm -hmm. It's kind of what it feels like. It's yeah. like, oh, shoot. It's kind of like a cute little optic. It's not good. Don't use it. But it's interesting. It's, I, I thought maybe making creating some distance would help make the gun better. It doesn't. You still die in every gunfight. Nothing you can do is going to make it usable until you get the trigger, honestly. Hardcore at least make one it tap good so you can until win it's gun max fights. level. Well, you can you can't win a gunfight, but you can kill someone before they shoot at you right when they spawn or something. Because yeah, I don't I don't see how you'd ever win a gunfight with this thing in core, but I haven't tried it in core yet, really. But um, yeah, this is a hardcore gun. The, I should have done that. The too, priceless yeah. challenge, by the way, for that one is using a magnification scope. You can use that nice little sniper one, man. Have some. Fun oh with yeah, that. it's fun. It it I immediately, dude. I I swear to God, I'm not kidding. I equipped it, and then the first time I ADS'd with it, I was like nostalgia transported to BO4 on the map. What's the map with the bridge and the water on both sides of it? Jungle. And say again? Jungle? No, not jungle. It's like one bridge at mid, and there's like two bunkers on each side of it. And then if you jump over the bridge, there's water. Contraband. I was immediately oh. transported to contraband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Little I was like, contraband. dang, dude, this is exactly like the BO4 Skull Splitter, man. Yeah, good times. Bad optic, though, and bad gun. So, yeah. Um, but again, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Once you get Akimbo Snake Shots, it's really good. Um, yeah. So anyway, fun. yeah, it is fun. So, when does Snake uh, Shot unlock? Do you know? It's like max level, basically. It's one of those. It's one of those attachments that says it unlocks at like level two, or use an armory unlock. So then it actually doesn't unlock until max level. So I don't know. I think it's like max mm -hmm. level. Okay. Yeah. I haven't looked yet. Yeah. <laughs> the reason. The reason I didn't bother to look into that more is because you need kills while ADS anyway. So I figured it isn't that relevant when Snake Shot unlocks. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Because I wouldn't want to use that really. Although maybe I would. Yeah. So maybe use Snake Shot even before you get Akimbo and max level. Because I guess you could ADS uh, up close with Snake Shot to do that camo. Yeah. But I didn't bother good. equipping it because I knew I needed ADS kills. So I said, eh, I'll yeah. just wait until that's done. So, yeah. But there's yeah, maybe by the, the time mine is max level, I'll have 50 kills with it by then, maybe. I did, surprisingly. <laughs> but also, it's 26 weapon levels, like you said, so I probably played 100 in-game hours with it first. So. Yeah, true. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, next category is melee. Melee weapons. So there are two melee weapons, the gutter knife and the karambit. They're not different. They're the same. Just uh, reskinned, yeah. They are mechanically they're the same, and the challenges are also the same, at least up till gold. Um, they are different 
oddly enough, for Forged and Priceless, but that's for part two of this series. So we are not going to talk about that. Um, and so they're just knives. They're Call of Duty knives, and they're really good. Uh, it has six weapon levels. You unlock the one and only base camo challenge at level four of those six. That challenge is to get 50 kills. Very straightforward. Um, and then the one gold challenge... More. Yeah, actually. And then the gold challenge is to get 10 kills on operators affected by a tactical. Again, run stuns, do it. And that's it for the base and gold camo challenges. Um, I'm not kidding. With double XP, I got both of these from level one to max level in a single game each, respectively. Yeah. I don't know why, but they level very fast. Um, so so you will immediately game. have it max level. Um, and then the challenge unlocks at level four. You just have to get kills. So the class setup I used, and I'm curious what you used, because this is what it, it seemed like was best to me. Infantry vest, because you get more sprint time. That's the one where you get more tax sprint and it refreshes more quickly. Yeah. And you can tax sprint with a knife. If you pay attention, you'll notice the animation's different. Uh huh. You so, can. yeah. So I used that uh, because obviously you're going to be running a lot with a melee weapon. Um, and then I also used scavenger gloves because literally no other gloves do anything if you're not using a gun. Uh, but scavenger gloves, you will resupply throwing knives from dead players. So I was also using throwing knives. Uh, not that those count for your weapon levels or camos, but having one is nice um, and it's fun. And then scavenger gloves so, are actually doing something if you're using throwing knives. I don't understand scavenger uh, gloves because you get your throwing knife back if you run over and kill somebody anyway. So what is it doing? Every dead player drops a throwing knife? I'm confused. So let's say I'm out of throwing knives and then I kill you by stabbing you with my karambit rather than throwing knifing you. It drops If one. I didn't have scavenger gloves... Since I didn't throwing knife you, there would be no knife for me to retrieve. Okay. But since I do have scavenger gloves, I've created a throwing knife when I otherwise wouldn't get one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And I think also when other people kill people, they drop little scav bags. I never didn't have a throwing knife when I was okay. doing this strat. Cool. So, yeah. You can just throw them super willy-nilly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's really fun, by the way. There was a life I had on Rundown where... Um, I was running around and I like got behind them and I, th I stabbed or I throwing knife the guy. I ran over him. I throwing knife another guy. I throwing knife another guy. And then I like ran over one of those guys. I got another one. And then there was like a fourth guy and I just throwing knifed him like four times in a row. And then one of them finally landed because I had two on me and then I had the two scab bags as well. You can just be like full auto throwing knife with scavenger sure. gloves. It's actually really fun. But anyway, um, and then for other perks, I was using covert sneakers, obviously, because you move silently. I would love to run lightweight boots to move more quickly, but I just think covert sneakers are way better for getting melee kills in this game so that people don't hear you running up to them uh, than lightweight boots are. So, yeah, I was using covert sneakers and I was also using ghost as my gear slot. Um, this would depend on what game mode you're playing. So if you're playing war mode, since you can't call UAVs or any kill streaks, obviously don't run ghost. If you're doing this in war mode, I would instead probably run EOD padding or tactical mask. Or what I did actually was tracker. I leveled this. I used this class to level the melee weapons for part of my journey in war mode. So I dropped Ghost, and I used Tracker. I don't know if you use Tracker yet in this game, Tanner, but Tracker is goaded. Is it? It's really good in this game. People's footsteps are the ghoulie camo purple. They're bright, oh, wow. bright purple. They're very easy to see, which I really like. So, like, Tracker has never been better. It's really, really good. Yeah. But I would probably only use that in war mode when people can't pop UAVs on me. Yeah. Otherwise yeah, I think true. ghost would probably be better because ghost with this class is always going to be up because you're always moving with yeah. a melee weapon, uh -huh. you know? 
So Ghost really has 100% uptime. And so, then... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, tell me about your perks. What, what were you So doing? I just did mine passively, which I feel like... I feel like that's what more people would do. Do that many people really just... I mean, it's it's quick to knock out, but at the same time, like, I just started it passively early on as I was doing ARs, and then you realize how good the knife is, and then, like, you end up just using it in a lot of situations. So I did not change my loadout whatsoever from what I was just running. I had it set up for, like, whatever gun I was using at the time. You pull the knife out to run faster anyway, so then in certain areas, like in war mode, for example... Uh, when I'm in like the two buildings in the first area, I just always have my knife out anyways, and you just run at people and uh, get easy kills that way. So I never set up a specific class for it ever. It's very quick and easy to do passively as well, and it's just good. You're going to end up doing really well that way. Like if you're – seriously, if you're in any sort of close range situation or building, just take the knife out. You're going to win the gunfight where you wouldn't win it with like an assault rifle half the time. For so sure. I just – I didn't do any of that, but like – the covert sneakers would make sense. Um, yeah, but, you know, if, if you're doing it passively, it's still very simple to do. Don't worry about changing anything, I would say. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I did passive leveling of the pistol. So by the time I got to pistols, my core 45 was like level 9. Um, but the knives, especially with the challenges in this game, get 50 kills. This is per this is built for passive leveling. You'll passively be leveling and getting camos on the knife if that's your secondary while you're working on other camos for sure. Yeah. So that's yeah. a good idea as well. But I didn't do that. I, I, I did a pistol instead. I think yeah. either of those work because the pistol kill uh, challenges are also l built for passive leveling because the first two camos are get 50 kills and get 50 kills while ADS. So you can passively level either of those two things um, with equally maximum efficiency, I would say. For sure, but yeah. 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 Uh, and then if you are not like Tanner and you're building a class like I did explicitly to level your melee weapons, the field upgrade I used, I was looking at the field upgrades and I was trying to figure out which one's going to be good. And I was like, Dead Silence could be good, but I'm running Covert Sneaker, so I don't need that. Obviously, a munitions box isn't going to be good. Portable radar might be okay. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try DDoS, actually. And one thing that's cool about DDoS, so DDoS is a field upgrade where you press it, and then it disables uh, enemy-like equipment around you or whatever. So, like, it disables claymores. And, and it also messes up their optics and stuff for a second, like an EMP grenade. So that's kind of nice, too. But uh, the biggest thing I noticed, which I didn't notice until I equipped it, is it shows you how many devices are in range of your DDoS. So I would be running around with my DDoS ready to be used, the field upgrade, and I would go like from this room to that room, and all of a sudden I would go from zero devices in range to like three, and I'd be like, oh, they're all in here. Like it would actually tell me where people are just by virtue of the fact that all these devices suddenly came into range. So it actually kind of can tell you that people are around, which is helpful for melee kills. Yeah, so, that makes sense. And it's also nice because at that point, I would just bang it. And then if they happen to have prox mines or claymores that I don't see, uh, I wouldn't have to worry about them. So that was it was cool for that, too. So I am curious what field upgrades you guys used if you were doing... Um, doing this strat though but i didn't think anything else was going to be super useful so yeah. yeah that's what i did yeah nothing would be really yeah and then the last category is launchers or excuse me the last category is launcher because there's one the rgl 80 um i have not i literally have not shot it once uh i plan i fully intend to skip it and not do it and just get another gun priceless and then get under stellar that way when season one comes out however obviously play hardcore uh because you can get kills better that way but since i haven't used it why don't you tell us about it tanner how far have you gotten this sucker um i have it forged yeah so uh to start with it's not nearly as good 
as you would think a grenade launcher would be, only because it has a bad fire rate. So I still have not used it in hardcore. I did everything in core. So yeah, it's got, a, I think it's six levels as well. You unlock the base challenge at level four, which is to just get 25 kills with it. This could take a lot of rounds, honestly. Like, uh, you'll get a ton of hit markers with this thing. You only get six shells, so make sure to, like, run um, Muni so you could get more ammo that way. So, yeah, the base challenge is just getting 25 kills. I did most of that in War, I believe. Um, any objective mode where people are all kind of in one area makes it easy because you'll get, like, five hit markers, and then on the last grenade, you'll get a triple kill with it. Because you were just damaging people that whole time, and they were just sucking up the damage from it. So, um, that's pretty straightforward. The goal challenge for that is get ten kills by hitting enemies with direct impact. No real trick to this either. Just you kind of are forced to use it in situations maybe where you wouldn't otherwise use it. Just like run into a building with it, you'll eventually get it. It's only ten of them. It's not that hard to do. Probably takes a couple matches or something like that. But yeah, if like you're playing a hard point and they're holding an objective, and they're capping it, and you're pushing it, if you just hold it out and you go in the room, you have a pretty good chance of getting a direct impact on them, you know? Especially with this time to kill is you're going to have time to get on target and fire as they're still putting damage into you. So something like that, probably actually easier in core than it would be hardcore, I would think. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk about the forge challenge here because this is the one everyone's talking about. Um, what are our tips to get 25 destroy enemy equipments? Ask people in game chat. That's what you do. There's literally no other way around it. So this, when they say enemy equipment, you have to get 25 of them. It only works for prox mines and claymores, not a single other thing, right? Which is super so, dumb. Yeah. It doesn't yes. work for like enemy munis or anything. Yeah. So like MW2, you had to do this. Uh, so you'd run, um, Whatever the perk was, so you can see things through wall. Engineer, I don't remember what it was called exactly. I think it was called Engineer. So I think it was Engineer. So that worked on like munitions boxes, all sorts of little things. This game, I don't know if it's bugged. I don't know if it's a feature. Nobody knows. It only works on prox ones and only works in Claymore. <laughs> yeah. So here's what you do. You queue into a game mode. A lot of people are saying they did ground war. A lot of people are saying free for all. A lot of people are saying hardcore. I went in a hardcore terminal. Um, I typed in chat. I said, please drop claymores. Just kind of saying it. See what people said. I immediately get a whisper to some guy. He said, meet at the back of the plane. Let's trade. So I was like, oh, okay. So I go to the back of the plane. We're, we're, no, you know, we're crouch spamming, so we know each other. Throw a claymore down. We both move away. We both shoot it with our grenade launcher. He runs up to me. I kill him, and then I go and die. We both respawn. We just kept meeting there. So in one match of terminal... Dom, I think it was. I got 18 of my 25. Wow. The next match, I was able to load back in. Luckily, the guy was still in the match, and he was on the other team again. So he, like, typed in chat. He was like, same thing. I said, yep. So that time, I ran um, the vest that gives you two lethals, so it goes quicker. I don't remember which Demolitions one that is. Vest, Demolition vest. Yeah. Demolition. So you run two of them, so we both place two claymores, shoot it. Again, same thing. So it took a match and a quarter to get all 25 of them. So the hardest thing is finding someone that will help you, which finding I don't think lobby. is that yeah. hard anymore because every single match I play, I'm not kidding, probably 50% of my matches, somebody's like, drop Claymores or drop Prox Mines, please. And most of the time, somebody's like, all right, I got you. Because everyone's in the same situation. Because one, every single person in the game will have the mastery camo in a month because it's so easy this year. Every single person is doing it. So they all know, oh, this is annoying. I'm willing to help someone because somebody else helped me do it. If like if the camo challenge was super hard and no one was doing it, no one would be willing to help you. But because everyone understands, they're all willing to help. So if you ask in chat, somebody will help you. Um, I think Jake was the one that was like, I, I think hardcore would be easier because people are like often burger bots and just nicer in general. Because it's usually like if people are playing hardcore seriously, it's usually more like middle-aged guys and they're just like friendly or they're not trying to sweat or anything so be like sure i'll play some prox mines for you or they're in there working on another rgl that's camo, more so what it is now exactly later yes so when you go into hardcore now it's a lot of people doing that yeah 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 run um, eod padding if you play hardcore by the way because yes a lot of people be slanging them rocket they do. grenades yeah and then yeah priceless for that one's double kills yeah so 
play hardcore for that. But uh, yeah, so there's no other trick. There's no other way around it. You simply ask someone to do it. And that's what, how that's how you know this challenge makes no sense when the only way to complete it in any amount of time that's not just rage-inducing is to ask someone on the other team in game chat to place them. You know that's a really bad camo challenge, right? Yeah, So true. this needs to work on everything. Again, I, I don't know if it's bugged or if it's a feature. This is something I kind of expected them to fix pretty quickly. Maybe this week we'll get a patch that addresses some camo challenges, but um, yeah, so that's what you do. Ask somebody, yep. somebody will eventually be nice to you. Like hardcore free for all, I feel like would work really well too. That's what a uh, J God recommended was free for all hard or I think he just recommended free, uh, free for all, but yeah, hardcore might be even better. Yeah. 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 Um, so. a, lot, a lot of people were saying ground war in discord. I have a hard time oh. believing ground war would be faster at all. Cause like if you There's die so many more people though. Yeah. But if you die, you have to spawn probably pretty far away. Then you have to deal with like 30 other people on the enemy team that aren't doing that. And they're trying to kill you. Yeah. That's interesting. So I feel like that would take longer. Like I think Chris said it was like three matches of ground war. That's a lot longer, but maybe you have a better chance of finding someone willing to do it. So if you're trying to play like sixes or hardcore and you can't find anyone to do it, then yeah, maybe it's worth trying ground war and somebody will eventually, you know what I bet. You know what I bet is worth a shot is if you have a real life friend, many of you don't, so you can you can turn off the episode, but um, if you do, get in Discord with your friend, and I'll be like, all right, Tanner, we're going to queue for Ground War at the same time, but we're not going to be in the same party. Three, two, one, go. Since it needs 64 people to yeah. fill a lobby, I imagine it's very likely that two individuals queuing at the same time, especially if they live close are going to get in the same lobby. And then you that just hope true. you're on opposite teams. And if you're in Discord, this would be super easy. You could screen share to show exactly where you are, use like tack inserts, and then just trade. That would probably be really fast, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've never tried it, so I, I can't confirm. But The only with tack inserts is they kind of recharge slowly. But, you know, they do last... How many times can you spawn on it? No, you can only spawn on attack insert. No, you can spawn on it more than once, can't you? No, once you spawn on it, it goes Is it away. just once? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because they have but a slow recharge rate. there's also those rate. planes where you can spawn on the chopper and then you can just parachute to wherever you need yeah. to go really fast. Yeah, it's true, yeah. I think yeah, so I don't know. Try, try. You know, everyone's saying something different, so it's working different ways for different people. Just start trying things. Hardcore free-for-all, hardcore in general, core sixes... Tens probably won't work very well because there will be too many people. Trying I would to kill not you. recommend tens. Yeah. yeah, tens is too crazy, and you don't get the big maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I wonder if the spawning is easier in invasion too. There might be like more spawns in invasion, ground war invasion, rather than just regular. I thought invasion you can't pick your spawn, isn't it random? Oh, is that the case? I That's know it's it was different. An MW2, That's why I it. I don't up, think but... you could choose where you spawned. Okay, you, just respawned you might be... the location. Now that you say it, I think you're right. So don't do invasion. <laughs> yeah, just do regular ground war. But yeah, so yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. So, um, other than that, that is it, boys and girls, for our camo tips. If you have any additional tips, please let us know, uh, and we will share them uh, for part two. So we'll do part two of this camo grind tips where we will cover forged and priceless and then any other tips that apply to the camos we have now that we didn't know. And um, hot fixes they've done, like kills in one mag, fixes, they will probably true. fix at some point. So we'll talk about that some more, maybe give some other tips if they do fix that. Correct, yes. Uh, that will That episode will probably be in like, I would say two or three weeks once Tanner and I both have Interstellar. Um, and yeah, then, you know, we'll, we're probably ahead of most of you guys. So something to keep in mind there. So, uh, that's it boys and girls. Hope you enjoyed. We will be back next week. Follow us on Twitter at the drop shop pod to see our schedule. We post it every Monday or in discord patreon.com slash the drop shot. A lot of fire bonus episode content, uh, this month coming up and then next month as well. Especially with the Warzone integration, we'll start doing some Warzone bonus episodes on Patreon next month. So now is a great time to join. And it's very cheap, five bucks a month, ad-free, early access, and those fire 
bonus episodes. Thanks for watching and listening. Stay humble. Stay humble.